ถาหายทุกคนเราอยู่รอเราอยู่รอ Is connecting now. Hi. Hola. Hi, Benjamin. Can you hear me? I see a black screen. Hi, everybody. Hi Benjamin, can you see me? Can you hear me? Hi, hi. How are you, Anthony? <laughs> Great, and you? I'm fine. We're waiting for. A... I think Marcus is a, is also in the room. Yes, he he didn't. I'm trying to invite him. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Hi. Hi. Hi Ben. Hi Anthony. Hope you can Hi, hear me. And the sound is good. We do hear you. Yes. Okay. That's excellent. Cool. Thank you. Thank you for being me here. Too. So cool to yeah, have you. Thank too. you, guys. <laughs> so we're just waiting a little bit uh, to wait right. for our uh, audiences to connect. Even if we know that it's not uh, uh, in live, that most of the content are being watched. Will be what we watched after we play on a, on several platforms, sure. but still for the people who wants to attend, uh, we're gonna wait a little bit. Um, I just I'm just going to say some words about Museum Week while we're waiting. So because it's very important day today, today devoted to innovation for cultural and social impact, which is the general theme of Museum Week. Uh, I just want to explain uh, ge the genesis and the reason to be of this theme. Um, we have to face it. Uh, we live in a hyper-connected world, hyper-globalized. Um, our thoughts are modified online. Our hopes are built online. Um, and uh, especially for the young audiences, I mean, their uh, brain is structured online, it's forged online, right? So... Depending on the world that we have online, we, we define the world that we have in the in the physical world. So we think that museums are key here because they can bring key content to give you know the keys to understand the world, to read the world, to build more resilient societies. I just wanted to say this word because um, online today the ecosystem of the museums, and I include into this uh, galleries, archives, science centers, music centers, even artists and creative digital. Uh, digital creators have a fundamental role to play here. Uh, and I will add this also, Museum Week is not only an event, uh, it's a community um, um, that is led by the United Nations uh, Sustainable Development Goals and, and others, but really uh, worldwide uh, objectives and challenges. Um, we think that we want Before change, you know, in order to change the world physically, we need to change minds. We need to change the narratives, and we are proud to announce today that we will launch soon uh, a membership program, um, and we will invite you know all uh, professionals to join us. But let's go now to the fun part of it, which is a conversation with great guests. So, um, just as a, uh, again as a brief introduction. You may have heard that uh, NFTs are shaking the world of art and, art and culture, sorry. You heard about the initiative from the Belvedere, from the British Museum, from uh, the Hermitage. You might also have heard that there is a, a brick and mortar museum in Seattle that was created to host uh, NFTs, work of art. So everybody's speaking about that. So the question of today is NFTs and museums, is it the deal? Is it? Is it already closed? I mean, are we going towards it? 
So I have the pleasure to, to welcome, I hope I will pronounce it well, Marcus. Marcus Wiesenhofer. Wiesenhofer? Yes, excellent. Cool. <laughs> Great <chairman>. From the <laughs> Belvedere. <laughs> Thank you. From the Belvedere Museum in Vienna, uh, who is in charge of the comms and strategy. Uh, you will tell uh, us more about that. And Anthony Trabo, uh, from he was the CEO of the Crypto for Arts uh, company. Marcus, could you just uh, briefly introduce yourself, uh, explain to our audiences, you know, your background, how did you get there? What is your motivation in life? I mean, in a nutshell, please. Sure, absolutely. Uh, welcome, everybody. Thank you, Ben, for having us. Uh, I hope that the sound isn't too bad. You will hear 300 years of Baroque uh, architecture, and I may take my smartphone here to give you the joy of a quick overview of what this is like. I'm just sitting here in our galleries of the Upper Belvedere. Um, and what I'd like you to see is here this beautiful day uh, overlooking the city of Vienna. Just, just to give you a quick idea and share this joy why I'm, uh, I still like to work uh, in this beautiful uh, museum setting every day when I wake up I'm really motivated you know to bring the joy of the arts um, to the people and I'm deputy head of communication and marketing here in the Belvedere Museum in Vienna Austria and yeah I'm happy to join in the conversation thank you Marcus wow thank you for the view also and uh, yeah that's a good, very good answer to motivation Anthony please Yes, and thank you also, Marcus. Uh, yeah, good image uh, as a, that is worth a thousand words. And uh, thank you also, Benjamin, for uh, welcoming us. It's really an honor to be uh, a speaker today at the Museum Week, but and es and especially uh, during the the Innovation Day. And uh, I'm Anthony. Uh, I'm uh, my background is uh, the one of uh, machine learning engineer. And uh, I'm passionate also about uh, about Web3 and about uh, blockchain technologies. And uh, I'm one of the founders of uh, this uh, dream, this uh, big project, uh, Crypto for Arts. And I would say just in one sentence uh, that my uh, specific goal and task is to find the most relevant uh, features in Web3 and blockchain technologies that could benefit to museums. And of course, we'll have the, the occasion to get a bit uh, deeper into it in a sec. Sure. Thank you, Anthony, and welcome. Glad to have you on board too. Um, Thank you. My first question to the both of you, actually. Um, what is an NFT? What is a non-fungible token? I mean, does it burn? Does it, what is that? I and mean, could you just explain. Maybe Marcus, you can try to give it a try. And, uh, and yeah, well, we, yeah, we have here both sides of the equation. Uh, you know, I'm talking uh, from the perspective of a museum guy, and maybe Anthony can much more uh, go into detail on the technical side. Uh, but just in general, uh, if you haven't ever uh, come across an NFT, it's an, uh, a digital uh, file. Uh, that is not exchangeable to anything else in, uh, as opposed to a cryptocurrency uh, like Bitcoin or Ethereum or others. An NFT, a non-fungible token, is something unique. Uh, and in this regard, it's uh, a, um, a specific part of a, of a blockchain entry and gives you a mm -hmm. certificate of ownership. So that's, that's in, in very simple words how I understand it. But Anthony, please... Mm -hmm. uh, help here from the technical side. <laughs> so it's it's a very interesting way to describe it because uh, I, okay, first very generally, I would say this is uh, just a unique digital asset that you cannot send twice, okay? This is a real definition of cryptocurrencies if you read the original paper of Bitcoin actually. And, uh, and the main difference for, with NFTs is that each one is really unique that's why we call them non-fungible. But uh, the, what it means, and your question about is it art behind it, I 
very like to compare it to photography. Like if you try to describe what is photography, you will probably go also into technical details to say how does it work and what, what can we capture with it and everything. But we also know that this is just um, a tool that we can leverage to create art. And mm -hmm. I consider that NFTs are exactly the same. It's originally indeed uh, a technology, but it has in its own codes and we use we can use them as uh, as art if you read the definition of photography you will see the first thing is is art actually is the art of doing something so uh, mm -hmm. interesting so, yeah, so, so that's really the link and that's why i think we are here today and tell me just one question so an nft is not a work of art per se it's the certificates of digital creation right well, this Definitely. is what is new yes so the nft <laughs> per se is not art it's just the certificate that tells you that this digital uh, this digital object is mine is yours or whatever right exactly so an NFT, <laughs> let's be clear okay so that's cool okay so i hope it uh, helped clarify the, a little bit uh, what we're talking about here um Marcus, I have some questions. Um, first of all, about the, the, the Belvedere. In a nutshell, what's its reason to be? I mean, we feel, uh, I feel, I would say, that it's very um, embodied into classical, right? We are in the majesty, we are in classical. And suddenly we hear about the Belvedere NFTs. Whoa! So what's, let's go back to the essence of the Belvedere Museum. What is it about? What is prison to be? Yeah, well, for those of you who haven't been visiting uh, Vienna and the Belvedere, I'm, I might just, you know, uh, give you an outset what uh, the Belvedere is. We are the Austrian Gallery uh, Belvedere, the National Gallery of the Republic of Austria. So really housing um, art from the medieval times up to contemporary art on three different locations. So we are really a relatively large museum also on international standards and a very old one, actually one of the oldest museums worldwide uh, in the uh, 1800s already, it was open to the public. And that's why we understand our institution as an open institution, open to uh, a lot of uh, different communities, a lot of different audiences, and also trying to uh, share this cultural heritage with a lot of different means. And uh, besides the physical uh, visiting of a museum, um, we've seen specifically in the pandemic um, in, a, in, a, in a tremendous uh, crisis situation for the whole museum's world and the society at large, how important it is also to offer digital means to enjoy the art, uh, to learn about art. So that's why we decided um, really to reinforce uh, all our um, you know, activities in the, in the field of, of, of digital uh, even mm -hmm. more in the last two years. So uh, besides being a museum that is promoting our cultural heritage in an open content policy. So we are very outspoken mm -hmm. in Mm -hmm. um, offering our cultural assets uh, openly to the public. And we are also doing a lot in the way um, of, 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 you know, art education, of trying to communicate the arts uh, via various formats. So you will find on all major channels, obviously our videos, our content, uh, we have our collection very much digitized that you can see and also even download a lot of the images that mm -hmm. are, are mm -hmm. IP free. But in addition to that, uh, we uh, in the last year uh, talked about internally, uh, intensively about how can we approach this new technology and how can we engage with okay. younger mm -hmm. and more mm -hmm. international audiences while the museum mm -hmm. is closed. Partly, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. we have seen that this is a, a big opportunity for us to engage with younger and international audiences uh, through. The That's area. interesting. Uh, if I may jump on this last idea, was it during the pandemic that the NFT, uh, the Klimt Kiss NFT project, was born? Or yes, it was. Yes, it was. Um, you know, mm. actually, the NFT. I mean, it it is a somewhat. Um, uh, 
a technology that emerged in the recent years, but really in the last year, obviously the hype was big. You mentioned some of the examples on a global level. There were only really a few museums like the Hermitage in the Uffizi in Italy and the British Museum uh, that dived, uh, you know, started with their first project last year. And then we were very the first one basically in a German speaking world and one of the first mm -hmm. ones globally that started with it okay. uh, in this February. Yes. Mm. So let's, let's describe these uh, NFT, I mean the KISS NFT project. What Can you just in one sentence, what was it about? What did you do? Sure. Um, I've also entered in the chat, you've seen the kiss.art. So anybody ah, who wants great. to see the quick mm. video, maybe, uh, and check mm. out the website, you get a good description of that. Uh, very briefly, um, to tell you about it. Um, the kiss by Gustav Klimt uh, is, is the masterpiece of our collection. Um, we've um, decided to go with this masterpiece with our first NFT project. We really stay see it as um, a first step into metaverse and the NFT scene. Uh, we are in it uh, for the long term. <laughs> um, it's uh, a project that uh, we've decided to do with a startup company in Vienna, who was the first company in Austria uh, who set up um, an art, uh, NFT uh, art fall. Um, so ArtiQ, the name of the company, they were the partners in this uh, project, setting up the technical side of it and doing the marketing together with us. So what we did essentially is taking this masterpiece um, and uh, taking a high resolution image of it. So basically every okay. visitor can take an image, but not in that high definition quality that we could do. Um, mm -hmm. It's a long procedure, taking a high resolution image of the KISS painting, uh, because the KISS uh, has never been traded or sold and will never be because it's such a national heritage uh, landmark mm -hmm. masterpiece. Mm -hmm. So we've decided to take a high resolution image and divide this uh, digital image into 10,000 tiles uh, with specific coordinates. And uh, you could buy uh, one tile uh, but not a specific one. That's the gamification part of it, because we decided mm -hmm. we wanted to have an interactive gamified uh, approach to the NFT That's interesting. world and mm -hmm. uh, not taking just an edition, uh, but on the contrary, really having revealed every week on Friday night, which actually part you will get from it. And then we edited... So you didn't know. So, so, so sorry to interrupt, because yeah. so, sure. so you decide to buy one uh, ten, one on 10,000 of, of the masterpiece yes. and you don't know which one you bought, right? You just yeah, discover Friday on night Friday. Friday is reveal night, so there's a cool. surprise factor in it. Mm -hmm. um, and you won't know until Friday night. Uh, you can buy up to five pieces per purchase in, in the wallet. The price mm -hmm. is 1,850 euros uh, mm -hmm. or equivalent to uh, zero... 0.65 Ethereum. You can buy via Ethereum or via regular credit card, PayPal, mm -hmm. bank transfer. And mm -hmm. um, if you buy this uh, tile, you are also able to add a dedication, a love declaration, because okay. we launched it uh, through Valentine's Day because it's really the most famous image yes, of, of love. Course. So That's people true. enjoy mm. dedicating mm. this piece to a loved one. Uh, and we show it in the museum, just right next to me, there's the big screen where you see those love declarations and people are coming to the museum, uh, seeing the, their piece, mm. their individual piece with the love declaration and they really oh, enjoy that excellent. as well. So, excellent. so just what, yeah, yeah, sorry, they're, they're, they're very exciting, very interesting. Uh, so the owners, do they, can they have in their pocket, I mean, in their smartphone, the can they show the piece that they bought? I mean, the, the yes. Okay. Yes, they will so show they... it. They have their mm. wallet. I mean, you need, in general, you need a wallet, uh, yes. which is a digital wallet that you have to set up in order to manage uh, your assets, your digital assets. So once you have the wallet set up, you're ready to go to purchase uh, and buy an NFT. And in the wallet, you will see that uh, transfer once it's allocated to you 
and you can show it on all different devices. And I've actually just heard that Instagram will uh, soon launch an NFT mode where you can see the art oh, production really? on mm. Instagram. You know, it, uh, a lot of platforms are now starting to, to show and, 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 and add uh, options for NFT collectors uh, to okay. show it because it, essentially that's what it's about. You want to share your art collection and show it to others. Very interesting. So, um, several questions uh, here. Why, um, how come a, 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 th a, uh, a 300-year-old institution, classical institution, I mean, decided to go to the Web3? Um, is it the COVID? Is it, is it pure communication? Is it a fundraising operation? Is it all that? What, what, what was the trigger? Yeah, that, that there is actually uh, different aspects that you mentioned already, all playing together. But uh, in an essence, our museum strives to be a museum that matters. So, and staying relevant uh, to society and to younger audiences as well. And large parts go via digital means. So we have to adapt to modern times and new digital communication features and also uh, developments like the metaverse. So in order to redefine constantly the museum uh, in a new setting and with new audiences, we also decided to take this uh, brave step uh, with a first project into the NFT mm -hmm. world. Very interesting. Uh, I have a last question on this project unless some uh, people in the, in the audience want to interact, but um, did you face uh, um, negative reaction in the world of museum? I mean, did some conservative, with all the respect, of course, um, do you see conservative reactions? I mean, people saying, oh, we should not do that, even in the museum, and which is, I mean, it's part of the, of the of debate. I mean, I mean, I remember that 20 years ago, people were discussing, are we going to do website or not? Uh, so yeah. was it the same internally and with your colleagues, with your peers or, uh, beyond the museum? Yeah, yeah, Benjamin, actually, <laughs> uh, you know, because uh, here, the title of our discussion, it's not at all a closed deal. I mean, it's an, a very open... <laughs> Wait, that's the conclusion. Actually. That's the conclusion. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's really the conclusion. It's a very open discussion because it's a very mm -hmm. dynamic field. There's all kinds of different opinions about it. And the, the market developments uh, show us at the, at the moment that the markets are down in general for NFTs and for crypto specifically. Yes. Um, so what I mentioned already, we are an institution that is planning long-term. Uh, uh, we are here for 300 years and uh, we are very much planning to be around for the next 300. And we are, um, you know, part of our digital strategy is really taking step-by-step -step, uh, approaches to new technologies. And we okay. believe mm. in this new technology of course, there's also critical questions regarding sustainability, uh, regarding in general how a museum uh, mm. should offer uh, their content. But as I said, uh, it's not either or, it's both. We all um, offer open content, but mm -hmm. we also open commercialized content, I would say, in this case, NFT content uh, to other target audiences. And I think a museum could do both and should do both um, Interesting. You know, act as a commercial agent, but also mm -hmm. act as a public institution very responsibly. I mean, we had mm -hmm. uh, obviously uh, uh, legal uh, support. We had technical support in helping us mm -hmm. as a museum institution to get acquainted in this highly dynamic field. So it's mm -hmm. a very it's, open it's, it, it was not a letter. Field. Yeah, it was not a letter in the mailbox. I mean, it Absolutely was... Absolutely no easy project. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah sure. A lot of, a, a lot of museums mm. keep asking us about it. How we, did we do it? Because I mm. see a, a worldwide recognition of our project. Uh, people are now uh, really realizing, okay, that's a hot topic and there's uh, only few museums uh, who did it and they're really approaching us on... Uh, what they can learn from it. And uh, of course, even us, of course. Uh, we are learning every day. That's Web3, you know, mm. together with yes. our technical partners. Definitely interesting. Marcus, thank you very much. Uh, Anthony, uh, we're curious about now we had the public institution. Uh, 
a look on on the things and now on the private sector it's very interesting to have you here thank you very much so you are the ceo of the company crypto for arts you're going to explain us maybe in a nutshell uh what is it about what's the yes, reason sure. to do crypto for arts sure and uh, before doing so i just want to say that this is uh, that there are tons of ideas in order to work between museums and web3 technologies we of course have a very strong vision of it and we have uh, our own tools that we are developing but i really hope uh, uh, this uh, kind of uh, talks uh, can inspire more people on both uh, sides uh, to develop uh, a lot of tools and a lot of and to bridge uh, the gap between uh, these two industries so specifically at uh, crypto for arts what uh, we What we want to do is quite simple. You are a museum, you want to restore uh, a masterpiece. Well, usually you go to ask to all your patrons uh, to, to chip in, uh, to, to finance it. Well, we offer them a new way to do it with blockchains. Meaning if we really start at the beginning to make it super simple, Uh, let's imagine uh, that for each donation of your patrons, you will give a, a thank you card and uh, to, to each one of them. Well, in our case, this thank you card could be an NFT. And why is it interesting? It's because you can resell it. So it's a, it's a very strong new feature to be able to resell a donation. And mm -hmm, each time mm -hmm. you, you resell it, the the museum would get a royalty out of it so this is again i'm trying to start to start from mm. what museums are doing right now and see how we integrate web3 technologies then this and specific nft could be one of the representations of the piece of art itself mm -hmm. so it could be done by one of the curators Uh, mm. of the creators of the museum itself or by a young artist. So just like this, you, you have a young artist that is creating digital art to then finance a restoration project in, for, for a museum and for a piece of art that has been here, that has been around for centuries. So mm. you link directly, you create a new experience where you link directly different generations. And this is very strong. And this is something that NFTs and Web3 technologies are allowing us to do and that we have to explore. And of course, then I, I won't go into details because I, I think it's clear, but you can create a new experience. Like with your NFT, you can go to the museum and you can maybe, for example, follow in the physical world, I mean, like the restoration project and maybe have some advantages just like it's it's happening mm. nowadays with patrons yeah. for each uh, museum so this well, is exactly well, what you mean yeah sorry anthony what you mean is very uh, i mean if i understand correctly what you mean is very interesting because it means that you not only you make an nft but you build a community around it right exactly the community around the cause oh. and uh, mm -hmm. and we build the whole experience with the museum to bring a new audience and Very a new and a new generation to the museum. Very interesting. Um, so what about crypto for arts? So what, <laughs> what about <laughs> it? So crypto for arts, yes. So this is exactly what we want to, to, to put in place. And very concretely, we exchange with museums. So we check a, rest a specific restoration project that they would have. We create a digital version of the, of the real, of the physical piece. We create the, the digital version. And then we, cre we create a, a whole collection with variations out of it. We sell it. And this way, we fundraise for the original, the physical masterpiece uh, that we want to restore. And we okay, bring okay, our okay. Wait, 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 wait. To You went too fast for me. You went too fast. I, I'm from the ancient world. Come on. So you ask, I'm a museum. I have a painting at home. You come, you arrive, you scan it very HD or whatever. You did, yes. you, then what's going on with this digital asset? Because suddenly it became digital. So what do you do with that? With this digital asset, I have some young artists that are coming and creating a lot of variations of this asset. Okay, okay so they, mm. they will add some colors on one of them. They will add uh, some sunglasses on another one, and they create a whole collection, uh, which is none of them is representing the masterpiece itself. Okay, it's very important. None of them gives you gives to and to the owner sure. any right mm. on the physical piece. This is very important, and uh, and then. 
So it's a, it's a tribute. Each NFT will be a tribute to the original masterpiece, and this will create a whole community around this piece to restore. And this is only one way to do it, of course. We are talking sometimes about creating the different versions of the masterpiece from the current state to the restored state and to follow uh, like this. Mm. So there are many ways to do it, but this is the base uh, for, for yeah. us. Okay, so that's very interesting. So you, you, you digitize uh, a, a work of art and yes. you, you ask two artists to hack it, right? I mean, you send them yeah. and say, do whatever you want to do it, tweak it, change it, Photoshop, Premiere, whatever. And then you launch a new, a new market with the creation that was made. And then these arts are, these new work of arts are being sold. And one thing is going to the museum and one, and one percentage to the artist. Is that correct? It's exactly this. And, uh, and it's also, as I said, a very strong way to, to link these. And also to link. Yes, definitely. Yeah, to remember that this very was restored this year for that. And how, I mean, when, when you bring these ideas into the museums, how do people react? I mean, do they say, what? What does it say? I mean, what, what's the reaction? I mean, do, do, so who do you speak if, with in the museums, by the way? Who do you speak with? Marketing, so communication, the, ahead of... You know, no, it, I, I always speak to the patronage uh, the departments. Uh, yeah. and, uh, and, and usually uh, now, I mean, these days, let's say, because a year ago, it was, NFTs were uh, a bit less uh, famous, of course. Uh, so these days, they uh, no, they love it. They love the idea. They understand it. They know. I mean, ask Marcus. <laughs> but uh, uh, but no, they they realize it. Uh, it's this is the future, and it's uh, they they have to go there at some point. Also, we understood it during COVID that it was important to have a digital presence on uh, online, and uh, mm-hmm. so I think this is not about if it's more about when and but then as marcus really uh, really uh, rightly uh, said it it's a whole process it's a lot of work mm. behind it and we're talking mm. about institutions very often it has to go to uh, the cultural uh, departments uh, to uh, of the government i mean to 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 agree to give the green light uh, for some projects so mm-hmm. uh, it's not something that happens uh, like this. In a step. But, yes. But mm. yes, it will. It will happen. It will happen mm. for sure. Mm. Okay. So before before I ask you another question, Anthony. So what I understand from both of you is that NFTs. So it's not only communication, of course, because it's also a way to fund. I mean, and 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 God knows that this is important. It's also a way to make community management i mean it's not not through like a, on on a on a social media platform but that is a community management you but the thing is that you manage patrons and donors but still it's a community it's a new way to animate this community so that's very interesting so it it changed totally the part of the relation of uh, of um, with with the audiences and with the donors so that's very interesting um uh, anthony um we under, I, I think we understood what Crypto for Arts uh, is doing. Um, what will you be in five years and ten years? What are your developments, your your horizon? Where where will you be in ten years? So uh, we really wanted to to go to the end of the logic of the restoration uh, uh, of masterpieces. And we believe this it is possible with the same kind of of processes to recreate pieces of art, meaning not only to restore them, but to have a community to support creation, recreation of masterpieces. Mm -hmm. And we really believe this will be possible and
So it looks like we have a technical problem here. Sorry. Trying to reinvite Marcus. And Anthony. Okay, Hello. we got, hey, hey again. Sorry, there was an interruption. I don't know where it comes from. I mean, um, that's... Sorry, uh, was it only me or... Was no, I don't think so. I mean, both of you uh, went off. I don't know what's, okay. what happened. Mm -hmm. I was still... It's okay, we will, we will edit the file. It's all right. Yeah, all right. <laughs> uh, let's Sorry, I thought it was the Wi-Fi. Anthony, where are you? Anthony, where are you? I don't find him. Hmm. Okay, maybe he's here. No? Mm-hmm, maybe he went... Uh... Anthony, are you here? If you would like to send a request to connect, please. No, so we're going to continue because I don't see him online actually. Um, so let's continue. Uh, maybe he will join. Um, that's very interesting. I mean, because we have uh, a tools that change a tool that change that changes the the way we receive the relationship with others, donors, and even you know um, the general audience when you sell the. The, the NFT uh, the, 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 the NFT keys um, that's that's a new way to engage that's a new way to fund the museum um, and you know I, I my question at the beginning is was you know uh, is it is it uh, an already closed deal why well, I, I remember that 20 years ago um, uh, maybe Anthony's yeah he wants to join he has a problem I think he will join with his personal account it looks like Um, 20 years ago. Hi, Anthony. You back? Hello. Yes. Yes. Sorry, the other account uh, was just uh, logged out right. for some okay. reason. Okay, it's okay, it's okay. So uh, I, w I was just, you know, trying to conclude a little bit about what we learned because it was very interesting um, uh, conversation about this yeah. new way to engage with audience, new way to found a museum, new way to animate a community, new way to animate an ecosystem online, uh, artists, with, we heard it with Anthony, uh, with the donors, with the artist community. I mean, this is a powerful tool that we have here. So when I, when I wrote this, uh, the question, is it already a closed deal? I was remembering that uh, in, in 2000, you know, in, when I was working in the museum, you know, people were saying, are we going to do websites? If we do websites, people will stop coming. So let's think before that. Of course, it's easy. I mean, now we know that. <laughs> of course you should. The same question with Web2. Are we going to open a social media account? Are we going to spread our content onto the, the, the platforms, um, on YouTube and Dailymotion and social media? We send our content. Our cultural heritage is being spoiled. This is the kind of sentence that was heard into the cultural institution, you know? Then, many years later, people are there the institution, because people are there, the individuals are there, and it's a new way to engage, it's a new way to, and, and we know that showing uh, a picture of the Mona Lisa uh, just give the, the will to go and see the, the, the painting, not to throw anything on it, <laughs> but uh, that's, uh, so, so, so actually it's a tribute, all these copies are a tribute. Um, so the question is to, to both of you, is it, is it already a closed deal that are we going to, I mean, museums are going towards NFT. There is no way that they can escape this. And by extension to where the Web3, including Metaverse, or there are still too much uncertainty. This is, I think, what's, what's interesting here. How far are we in the development, in the security, in the trust, I would say, in the, in the system? Um, Marcus, you want to say something about that? Yeah, sure. I, I can not uh, 
uh, agree more um, what you said about, you know, um, that I think there's an internal uh, law here in, in, in general in communication and uh, with media. I mean, it's only adding up. I mean, we've seen, uh, you know, uh, after the telephone, TV, radio, all the new means of technology adding up. And we see it uh, really as an opportunity for the museum uh, to attract people to the original. I mean, we do all these digital means in the end that they are one day coming to the museum. For a long time in the last two years, they couldn't come. So it was an opportunity for them to relate to the artwork anyway. But essentially, uh, when I would buy an NFT of an uh, artwork, I would really long to go to that museum and see the original. And that's what we are hoping for with the NFT mm -hmm. project. And cool. I cannot yeah. say mm -hmm. if, if all museums uh, should go into the NFT uh, world. Uh, from what I see, um, from my learning, I see it as a great opportunity for museums. Of course, they need to be, uh, you know, very responsible with their cultural heritage. You know, um, it is a, a very new and developing field. Um, so, of course, uh, there is issues uh, related to it. But if you are careful um, and responsible in acting um, in an execution, I think it's an, uh, a great uh, opportunity um, to stay relevant to younger audiences. I, mm -hmm. I'd, I'd just like to share, you know, um, a one quick anecdote. Um, we've heard from one of uh, the NFT buyers, who is this Gustav Klimt and how long does he do <laughs> NFT now? So uh, there's even buy NFT, uh, you know, lovers out there who collect uh, pieces of collectibles in NFT, but don't really know Gustav Klimt. But at least for this person, uh, we found a new way of connecting, you know, the classical mm. art and NFT. So there again, there's a big opportunity for museums, and mm -hmm. I can only encourage more institutions and uh, mm -hmm. uh, more people to engage with that because it's an exciting new technology. Okay, that's very interesting. Thank you for this uh, great uh, uh, comment here, Marcus. Maybe one day we will have in the in the next weeks, you know, the 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 chance to have you again and speak about, you know, metaverse. That would be, you know, also which is another topic, I would say, socially yes. speaking, for the institution and so on. But thank you. It's very, very, very interesting about NFTs. Anthony, is it? Uh, is the is it uh, NFTs? It's uh, it's it's Johann Sebastian Bach. It, everything is written and it's going the way it's, this is the way that I mean everybody is going to be like the dominoes everybody's going to fall on that or is there do we how cautiously should museums go with NFTs according to you I, so I of course there are many risks uh, be, behind it I won't uh, hide it and I, I won't try to not to pre to, to pretend it, it's all uh, uh, everything is uh, is beautiful in this world and um, and I think the one of the biggest challenges is around ownership uh, because we are very often talking about uh, public goods like public pieces of art so I think one of the main risks is uh, to to not to be careful with all of this with the the intellectual property that is behind each uh, each uh, nft so so this is one big risk of course uh, but apart from that it's more than opportunity overall it's more than a, an opportunity it's i would say an empowerment mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. what what is a museum i don't think this is just a list of masterpieces it's it's an experience and it's nowadays a physical experience. Actually, many museums have started to, to make it also a digital experience. And we realized again how it was useful during COVID. But I think it's, uh, it, there is not a competition between these two worlds. Uh, they have to work uh, hand by hand. And overall, it's just about providing a new type of experience. As I told you before, it was the end of my previous comment that I couldn't make. Uh, the, the, it's also for the museums are not only about uh, the past, it's also about the future, right? Uh, we were talking about uh, recreating art, right? So, uh, so this is more general than this. It's about an experience, a whole experience. And this is why I think this new world will only bring opportunities.
Very interesting comment also, uh, Anthony. Very, very, very interesting. It's uh, very powerful. I like uh, all the ideas. I like also what you mentioned about what is a museum because it helps answer to what we should do, what we could do. What is a museum today? I mean... Yeah, I mean, and, and I, would like, mm. I would like to add just a, a quick comment. It's that I, I don't imagine that one day people will be like, should we go to the museum, like the physical one, and say, oh, no, let's just go online, actually. It's, you understand this is, this, okay, there mm, is a competition between mm. these two worlds, but it's, it's an experience to go there. Yes, and also maybe maybe one thing also could be to not to be in a dualism thing where there is the physical by opposition to the virtual. But it's one thing: the museum is extending online. It has walls. It offers things in the physical world, and its reason to be is translated, I would say, in the digital world. So, and and this this the gathering is the museum. This is why I like, you know, what is a museum? So if you, you agree that the definition of museum is extending to the digital world, then, yeah, it's very okay to do this kind of thing and to engage and to try new, new ways to, to, uh, to find a um, to way to fundraise, to engage. I mean, this is, uh, um, yeah, I think it's... Uh, it's um, do you have... Um, Mar I, I just wanted to Marcus know... Marcus was uh, mentioning... Uh, so Marcus was mentioning the gamification behind yes. the... the, the behind the collection that uh, the Belvedere did and and I think this is also the key it's not just because they are fine of uh, uh, the gaming industry it's of course because of the engagement is very important with your with your audience and uh, we and again we are still in this very experience that museums are creating and that web3 is allowing all of us to to create so this is this is really the next step I think Okay, that's very interesting. Just maybe at the conclusion. So, first of all, thank you to the both of you because it's very uh, it was very fruitful conversation. I wish we could uh, um, make another talk about uh, Web three and metaverse just to see that. Um, I would like you know to maybe to end with a sentence that I unfortunately I don't know where I heard it, so I don't know I don't know to give the credit, but I find it interesting in the conversation and it fits. Uh, it nourishes, I think, the, the, the purpose of Museum Week and, uh, and Global Institution. The sentence is this one. The future is hard to predict because the past cannot stop changing, meaning the look on the past cannot stop changing. And I think that with digital, it helps also online to watch things from the past and to change what's going to happen. So um, it's something that, uh, that might be interesting to chew. But... Um, Thank you very much to both of you. It was uh, a great talk. I think we said we would, we would, we would, we would talk uh, 15 minutes maximum. Mm -hmm. We went, <laughs> we went uh, further, so that's cool. Uh, thank you very much. Have, hi, thank you. Uh, everybody, to the audiences, and uh, have a great museum week. Thank, thank you. you thank you. Great pleasure. Thank you very much. Take good care. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.